Okay, we're just doing a cervical nerve root block. Uh, this lady has intractable pain in her right arm, and we've been asked by the neurosurgeons today to do a right C5-6 intervertebral foraminal injection, so obviously that's going to get the right C6 nerve root. So we're going to inject a bit of steroid, a bit of local anaesthetic around the right C6 nerve root. There's not much to see on the MRIs, but she's got pain in a characteristic distribution, so we'll uh, park a little bit of steroid and local under fluoro CT guidance. Okay, so for cervical nerve root injections, uh, we normally have people line up so that they're facing towards us. Uh, we're just placing the patient's neck roughly into the middle of the gantry. Uh, we know that C5, so 6 is going to be approximately there, but we'll just move into position and then scope up and down and count down to be at the right level. So we scan these at one millimeter slice thickness on 10 MA uh, so that we keep the dose low. There's, uh, very little noise in this situation anatomically. It's a small target and this high intrinsic contrast between bone and soft tissue so we can run with very low dose rates. We keep the zoom in nice and tight and we will be counting from below in this situation just to count up to make sure at the right level. T1, so that's 7, 1 coming through six, seven, and then five, six, which is there. So we're just having a bit of a think now about the best approach to get to the intervertebral foramen. We need to get to the nerve root and obviously avoid going anywhere near the vertebral artery. One of the things which we do routinely for these cervical facet joint injections is put a bit of a bend on the needle. Do you want to zoom in on the needle there? And so what we're doing here is we just insert the 25 gauge needle inside a 19 gauge drawing up needle and put a bit of a bend on it there. The bevel of the needle is uppermost. We know where the position of the bevel is from the um, position of the notch on the hub. We just put a little bit of a bend on that needle. That'll give us some steer so we'll be able to get that needle tip to go exactly where we need it to go today. A bit of celestone chronidose and lignocaine 1% for our injection. And skin prep. Okay, so we just left the 25 gauge needle in after local anaesthetic. There is a place marker. Switch on the laser now. We have the 25 gauge spinal and we can now park that in the final position. One more. Yep, nice and still for me. What we're doing now is just exchanging the local anaesthetic needle for the 25 gauge spinal needle. So the 25 gauge local anaesthetic needle has been used to put local anaesthetic down to where the 25 gauge spinal is going to go. The 25 gauge spinal's got a longer reach than the local anaesthetic needle and has the angled tip. So I've just exchanged it there for the 25 gauge spinal. There's a series of taps with the foot pedal on the fluoro CT system to show where the tip of that needle is. Three images, the image towards the patient's feet, image in the middle and an image towards the patient's head allow you to adjust your z-axis position. These are contiguous one millimeter slices so the distance from the lowermost image to the topmost image is only three millimeters so this is precision placement. What we're doing here is just uh, finessing that because clearly it's important to get the needle tip to run as posteriorly along that intervertebral foramen as possible. Uh, we'll be pulling the table up and down a little bit there to see the course of the vertebral artery to be sure that the needle tip is placed behind the vertebral artery, uh, close to the nerve root, so that when we inject the celestone chronidose and lignocaine, uh, we're confident we're not actually in the, uh, anywhere near that vertebral artery. The, Next video you're going to see is uh, from the other end of the gantry, from the looking in over the patient's head, where you'll see us uh, see me just testing that needle. So once I've got the needle in the uh, what I think is the correct position, I take the stilet out to be sure first of all that we're not getting back any uh, any blood from the stilet. Um, if you get any blood at all, it's usually venous. Uh, but of course there is the possibility that the tip of the needle is in the vertebral artery. 
With a 25 gauge needle, that's not actually the end of the world. That's uh, much smaller than the uh, needles we used to use for direct vertebral arteriography back in the pre-catheter days, but nonetheless, it's um, not obviously what we're aiming to achieve here. I've never actually had that particular situation. Uh, but if we saw venous blood, then that would be indication to do a, a contrast test. If the stilette comes out and there's uh, nothing to see and we're fairly sure the needle tip is in the right place, then I usually test the uh, position of the tip with a little bit of local anaesthetic and see if we can produce numbness down the arm. If I'm happy then that local anaesthetic test has worked and that we've got numbness down the arm, then and only then do we finally inject a steroid and local anaesthetic. And that brings us to the end of the case. So what I'm doing here now is just going up and down, confirming the trajectory, negotiating the osteophytes around these intervertebral foramina is the principal tricky component of this procedure. So you need a trajectory which takes you away from the vertebral arteries into the intervertebral foramen and allows you to get past the various osteophytes that are present. So on this last section now we can see just taking the stilette out of the 25 gauge needle, just a bit of a pause there to be sure that we're not seeing any blood coming back on the needle. Once we've, uh, I've satisfied myself that there's no blood returning from the needle, then a little test, this is local anaesthetic, lignocaine 1%, just fill the hub of the needle with lignocaine 1%, then attach uh, the syringe and inject just a tiny amount of lignocaine 1% and confirm with the patient that they're experiencing a numb sensation now where they had pain before. And then the final uh, step in the process, once we've done all of that, is to actually inject the steroid and local anaesthetic, which is what we're doing just now. This little bit of that static image on the screen confirms the needle tip position in the intervertebral foramen at C5 slash 6.